Okay, we're now ready to learn how to translate Symbol.js into Lambda.js. The basic idea is that Symbol.js, um, an object, is represented as a reference. Now, the way we're going to implement this is an object is going to be represented as a reference to an immutable uh, object. And this is a key point, is that in Lambda.js, uh, the objects themselves are immutable. So if you want to mutate an object like you would in JavaScript, you would have to create a new copy of it, okay? Um, so the syntax that you've learned that I showed you in the previous lesson was that when you um, set something, set an object, you would get a new object, a copy of it, right? As usual, so objects are immutable. Um, so first, let's set the stage in terms of what are the expectations, how we're going to represent simple JS in Lambda JavaScript. JavaScript. Um, as I was saying, objects are are still immutable, but in, in JS and JavaScript, they're not. So what we're going to do is we're going to represent them as a reference to an immutable object that is stored in the heap. A function, it's going to be represented as an object that has two fields. The first field is going to be the field with the code of that function. And the other field is going to be holding the prototype field, okay? And the prototype, as you know, has to point to an object in JavaScript, which means that in our implementation will be a reference to an immutable object. And then what we're gonna do, creating an object, we'll have to initialize. So it will have to create uh, this uh, object, right? So the new, what it will take is, we'll take an a function representation, right? And then it will read the code from it. It will read the prototype from it. And it will create a new object. It will initialize the prototype with the prototype field. Uh, and then it will, in, that is just to allocate the new object and then pass that new object to the constructor, which is the code field. And this we've learned already, right? And it will be clear in the next few slides. So finally, method invocation has to respect this. So you have an object, you always have, um, you do object dot, so you have a, a thing to call a method, right? Uh, so you have access always to the field, but in simple JS, because there is a reference there, you have to have this level of indirection where you have to take a, a reference to an object, you have to read the object, and then inside that object you have fields, uh, and the code, you will read that from there, and then you pass the this to, to um, the method that you're calling. So I guess the, the main points that we need to make is we need to make the this explicit because in, in uh, Lambda JS, there is no concept of this. Um, and functions in Lambda JS are not objects. So we need to encode them as an object that holds references to code and whatever. Uh, so object plus Lambda. Uh, and we have to make me memory manipulation explicit um, and finally, there are no method calls, so we have to encode method calls as function calls. So, just to give you a high-level view of what's going to happen, if you have this code in JavaScript, the way we would represent it in Lambda.js would be, if you ignore references, would be this, which is to say, I'm assigning to a variable shape an object that contains two fields. In one field, I'm going to store the code, right? This code. And in another uh, field, I'm going to initialize the prototype. I'm going to initialize it with a new object that is empty. And also notice that the this is made explicit. So we create object here. Object, object, exactly like I showed you when I introduced JavaScript, I started from the most basic thing and I went to the most user convenient thing. So now we're doing the reverse process. So we're taking something that is closer to the user's intentions and we're lowering the representation to something that is easier to, impl to run or to implement as an interpreter. Okay. If we want to make memory uh, visible, 
it means that we need to sprinkle some allocations here and there. And we also need to have operations that read from the memory and store to memory, right? Our heap get and heap set that we've learned. So allocation, because we're creating a new object, where are we creating new objects? Here and here. So in each of these two, we need to allocate an object. Sorry, one is here outside and the other one is this object. This is internal, so it's not an object, right? This is code. This whole thing is a lambda. But the prototype needs to be initialized. That has to be allocated a new object. And um, the object that points to shape has to be stored in the, in the memory because we need to mutate it. So we allocate that as well. So the only thing I did was add a lock before this and add a, a lock before this the two object declarations. For instance, if we want to translate new, what we do is what I was saying before, you first create a new object and you initialize the proto field to shape.prototype. And then what we do is we call the code and we pass the this explicitly, whereas here is implicit. This is all implicitly done. So we're making everything very explicit. Okay, if we want to use memory, what we're doing here, again, allocating, right? Because this is a new object. And because we want to read the object that is contained in the memory, we need to do deref. Deref is reading from the memory. So it's a heap get, similar to a heap get. So here as well, whenever you're doing shape dot something, you need to do deref. Okay. Finally, if we want to do a method invocation, we have P1. What do we need to do? First, we need to just high level without memory. What we would need to do is get the, the um, code associated with translate and then pass P1 as this, right, to that code. So that's what we're doing here. First, we're getting the method, which is an object. And then we're calling the code of that method and we're passing the this, initializing the this by sending P1. Okay, but if you have memory, you have to make it, make explicit what are the derefs. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, there's P1 dot something, deref that. And then this translate, the field stored in translate is another object. So you have to deref that as well is a second deref. And finally, you call things as are. So in, in simple JS, this is written as is, and this is just a shorter syntax. Okay. Finally, we want to look at this part of the example where we are assigning something to shape.prototype.translate, and we're assigning a method to it. And then we're calling it, everything together. What we're doing is everything that is on, on the right hand side, right? Uh, and here I have already made explicit the memory allocations and all that. Okay. Now in the next video, I'm going to cover the transition function, which is what you find in homework eight, step by step.